Welcome back to Your Money, Your Call. It's the Bonds edition. I'm Mark Todd from The Nav, and I'm joined by Richard Murphy from XTV and Rudy Philippec van Dyke, who's dressed as Richie Benno just for the weekend because it is the summer to kick off, and he's from FN Arena. And he's here to answer any of your questions. So it's Richard, 1300 30 The email is yourmoney at skynews.com.au. Uh, welcome. You're looking yes. absolutely fantastic. Well, I thought if I make a late, up, late I mean, entrance, I better, I better come dressed to impress. Oh, mate, it's a Christmas <laughs> look, and I'm really proud of you. Um, so how have the market's been for you? The markets, sort of, the equity markets came good. You and I have been talking about the banks. Yes. Telstra. Yes. I don't agree with, you know, the analysts, whoever, no, the, whoever the dreaded analysts are, the bogeymen. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why they say what they say, so now the market's well, turned if, and gone. If you have another half an hour, I can explain it, but that's a little bit long. In, in short, those who expect that the banks will have to cut their dividends are basically doing on mathematics. The, math, the maths don't stand up. Yeah, right. And so in three years' time, at least two of the banks will be cutting uh, in, uh, dividends. Three years' time? According, according over, over a period of three years' time. So yeah. you're going to earn a 9% dividend? For the well, next if you, if you, two and a half if, years. If you gross it up, yes. Okay, so you get a 9% yeah. dividend over the next two and a half years, and you don't think that's a good... Because they, they're going to tell me what's going to happen in three years' time. Yeah. Right. Because, because what it effectively means is that you will... You, every, everything else being equal, you will get, you will get the de-weighting of the shares. Yeah, right. And that's obviously what, what has happened now. And now we're getting... Obviously, now we're getting bid up again. And um, why are we being bid up, mate? But that's what I'm trying to understand. It's, it's, They've it's, changed this, their mind? This, you no, know, no. This is, this is how the share market works. And this is why it confuses so many people. I mean, the stocks that have performed absolutely fantastic so far, and I definitely hold many of them in my portfolio. But now, someone is deciding that we, we are going to have an end-of-the-year rally. Because the Fed is going to raise interest rates, and yeah. we, all, we all can be comfortable with that. Yeah. So we, now we have to have a rally. Now, if you're not putting sh your money in the, in the Australian share market, you're not going to do it with the stocks that have performed very well, because they are, at the very least, fully valued. Fully priced. So you're now going for the cheap ones. Right. So Which is the, the banks in Telstra. So the irony now is that all the bank, all the, the shares that have absolutely performed so badly this year are now going to be the champions for the end of the year rally. Yep, so it'll all be square. Yeah. Probably work yeah. it that way. And that's, that's exactly how the share market works. Confusing, isn't it? Very. So that comes back to our conversation about portfolio construction. You need to have the confusing, illogical, stupid piece, equities. <laughs> uh, you need to have a cash component that gives you some consistency of earnings, um, regular income. I feel that that's a combination of all of it. That is senior, subordinated yep. and hybrid. I don't think you can, I find it hard to understand how you can go past hybrids that will give you 5% over the cash rate. APRA regulated entities, and I think they have to blow up in the next five or six years, whatever the duration is. I think sub debt, ANZ subordinated debt is 2.75 over the cash rate. Mm -hmm. They just did a new issue. So you're almost getting 3% over the cash rate for taking ANZ subordinated risk, which is priced such that when ANZ gets yep. rolled, yep. And my point is, I agree with everything you said, except in between now and when it's called, if it is called, but they've mostly generally been called, there's volatility. So you need to weigh that up in a total returns, mark to market sense, because How you may you well that? be selling out. How do you do that? How do you work out if I'm being compensated <clears throat> for taking less risk? So if, if ANZ Senior is 117, uh, and I, I'm making that up, 275 for the sub and nine percent for the equity how do you work I'm, out i'm saying the, the 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 income you're talking about is there so yeah. the income is there i'm saying well let's have a look at the price and do a marked market daily marked markets like all professional managers do and people in the equity market do they do mark to market their their returns and have a look no, and no, say no. well see, see now the if, equities guy is now backing the, the bonds guy that's unbelievable <laughs> but hang on a so, second but we, you, you and I so that's I'm, I've got a foot in both camps having been 20 yeah, years yeah. At, at but the that's ASX. the challenge that's what I'm trying to say I accept your point that it's, if, if you're going to hold for until call then that's fine yeah. you ride out that volatility yeah, because but, you don't care yeah, but too many fixed interest people think that you are by definition going to hold until until it finishes and, and you don't sell in between no that's the greatest problem with fixed income or yeah. people think of it because you don't want them to do that you no. want them to create better value by when that rally so i've shown yeah. people suncorp short end was trading higher than suncorp longer mm. so sell the 
longer yeah. ones. By the, I, I want you to, yeah. you know, utilise the, the 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 opportunities in the credit curve. I, I definitely want you to do that. But but I, the point I was trying to make was. I don't know about the mark to market story because I know that in the equity piece, I don't feel there's that sense of mark to market, except in the world of professionals. I completely get that. I, I'm trying to say that avoid the white noise of your analyst people that say, oh, they, the banks can't do something in three years' time. So there's something at 8%, I'll buy that. There's something at 5%, I'll buy that. Something at 2 I'll buy that, whatever. And then be avoid the white noise. Is what sort if your of, wife divorces you next year and you have to sell it all in a year's time or 18 months? Well, okay. So, volatility then so will count. Let it me might assure be here, you, might be Jane, there. if you report divorce me in 18 months and prices are down, bad luck. Okay? It's my fault. Because it's half yours as well. So the there'll be a bitterness as well. So you said it was worth idea. 100, it's now worth 50 and you want to get 25. Yeah. So you might be a little bit happier in some respect. But, but it's, not, it's not just that. There might also be you do want to rotate out. You think actually equities are really cheap. Yeah. I want to sell an asset now to buy some equities. And you don't want to be selling a hybrid that's tracked it down. You want to be selling something that's actually negatively correlated. You yeah. say, well, I'll, I'll sell that, I'll get more money and buy that. That's just another reason. I, ac I accept the point that if somebody's definitely holding something until the call date, um, even if you assume 100% they're all going to be called in the future, and App has changed the rules somewhat on that, um, then they'll get that return. I'm saying if they have to sell somewhere along here, then volatility does count. And I'm not saying don't buy hybrids. I'm saying like the guy today who came to us and he's got a portfolio for his client and he wanted to pick five XTBs, pretty capital stable, and he wanted to pick five subordinated um, instruments. Yep. And so he's actually doing what you're saying, which is a bit of, bit from, and he has cash and he has equities. So he's, he's doing a bit from both, but he wants the capital stability of some yeah. of the senior bonds. And I get that. I, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying don't do this. I'm just saying, in lieu of creating a portfolio, stop a little bit of the white noise. Have a have a look at what you're going, to, your, what your outcomes are.